uh, I am Nerisha. This is Langas One Television, and uh, this is our first episode of Christian Apologetics, where we ask the tough and the contradictory and blasphemous questions about Christianity and religion and everything about God and uh, Jesus. Yes, and here today we have uh, Nikki Simon. Yes, yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for having me. My name is Simon Andiki. Um, those are my official names. I am not a title person, so um, you want to call me uh, whichever fits uh, for as long as not malicious um, that is fine I am a husband I've been married for the last about eight years I'm a father of two girls um, what I do is I I talk and I get to pay my bills so I teach I mentor I coach um, two major areas mentoring young people to pursue their dreams but also leadership consultancy um, with the bias towards transformation. Yes. Okay, uh, so uh, straight to business much later. To not be tongue up, are you saved? <laughs> like, what's, what's your role in the church? Okay. In, in the whole religion? So, you have asked two questions. You have asked what my role in the church is and whether I am saved. Yes. To the first one, yes, I am saved. And salvation means believing in Jesus Christ, trusting him to be the son of God and uh, putting my trust in him. Yes, I am saved. Um, I am a member of a local church. I have different roles as a teacher and as a mentor. I've been doing that since I was in high school, form two. Yes. So, Iliaza Kitambo, meaning some of those uh, leaders who are CU while in high school. Yes. So everything in Nanjianga CU, what of when that CU? So, religions, Ziko Mini, you know, there's the Muslim, there's the Islamic faith, Ziko, like there are a lot of religions. But most religions is not Hunger top, not Hunger Christianity, Islamic, maybe the Hindu, and there, there's also atheism, that's also a Hindu religion. So, and there's always, it's a point of contention because Kilanto and Asema, um, we are the mm -hmm. right religion, this mm -hmm. is the right religion, this mm -hmm. is Islamic is the right faith, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. Christianity is the right faith, Hinduism is the right faith, mm -hmm. and atheism is like, this is it, this is it, mm -hmm. I am right, everybody mm -hmm. says I am right, and in most cases, we are going to persecution of the Christians, mm -hmm. Islam is one on a like there are bombers, you know, like there's always, religion is center most in war, among mm -hmm. any fights, mm -hmm. in any, so, in your opinion, why, why, why do you think Christianity is the religion? Bona, bona, Christo, bona, mm -hmm. Islam, mm -hmm. you know, and how do you, okay, how are you gonna, where, where, you know, like we want to solve the point of contention, okay. you know, like the coexistence. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for the question, and it's a good one. Um, to begin with, I believe strongly personally that what any religion tries to answer are three major questions. Um, where our origin is as humanity and as the universe? Where did we come from? And second question is, we are here, then what are we supposed to do? So what is our purpose for being here? And the third question that I believe religion tries to answer is, where do we go when we die? And so based on those three questions, um, I have found the arguments that Christianity tables, especially through the person of Christ, to give me a convicting answer um, that, yes, tries to answer the questions in a more understanding and a more logical way. Because if in the first question, about my origin, it just tells me that it is God. So there is a master creator, there is a master designer. And I agree with that fact because when you see 
creation the way it is, when you see the systems, the way things are happening, when you see how life is going on and the way things are, you will say that this is not an accident for the universe to exist. It calls that there's a master designer behind it. And Christianity tells me that God created me. Okay, and so for me, yeah, other people would call that master designer or that um, force behind why we are here differently. But for me, in Christianity, the answer is clear that as I try to seek where did I come from, there is this creator called God who is beyond time and because of him i am here when i look at how i'm supposed to live i enjoy the teachings of christ especially how i am supposed to relate with my neighbor love your neighbor as you love yourself the golden rule which mostly cuts across majority of the religions do unto others as you'd have them do unto you um, jesus says if somebody slaps you on the left turn the right even though at some point there's an issue there because we've been taken advantage of and there's a disclaimer there and the most tough one is when he teaches and he says love your enemy and do good to those who hurt you what does that show me that in christianity i am made to value others more than even myself and the reason for that is not that i need to hate myself as an individual but i need to value others and not demean them based on maybe not being in my color or my faith, but I need to value them because one thing we share here is our humanity. You are a human, I am a human. That is important, this life. And so the other things, what you dress, how you drink, how you walk, if we find something that would give us cohesiveness and unity, then it is helpful. But there are questions because when you talk about people fighting, it's interests and personal interests. If you were to listen to what the claims of Christ are in terms of living, it's about considering others and looking for the good of others. And when you think of the good of others, definitely it will push you to value peace and to value harmony. And, and that is what has helped me. And I think I have tried as much as possible in my life. I know I might not say that I don't have enemies. I know I have enemies. Maybe there are those whom I have wronged. Maybe there are those whom, um, because of my difference of opinion or my talk or what I do, even the time I got married, I know there were ladies I, I, I wronged. Maybe there are those who have not had the confidence to come and tell me I was counting on you, but uh, you know, yeah. And, and so that helps me. It even teaches me how I'm supposed to live with my wife, how I'm supposed to raise my children, how I'm supposed to relate to my neighbor. And then the third question is, in terms of where I'll go after I die. And that question, I think, the person of Christ has answered it so well. Because he has said he, he has told me he is the way, but he has also told me he is going ahead of me to prepare a place for me. Now, I, I, I don't need to do anything to earn that. I only need to believe and trust. And that is where f religion is all about. It's about faith and trusting. And so for me, uh, Christianity makes a lot of sense because of the claims of Christ and the way he has taught how we ought to relate with each other and how we ought to live. Now, it is one thing to have the teachings of Christ. It's another thing to see how some of his followers do it. Okay, and I am hoping that I'm one of those followers whom, of Christ, whom will make people want to say, I would like to be part, to be part of that. Yes. So you just said uh, that you don't have to earn. Yes. To, to go to the better place of heaven. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. but then again, one of the verses in Osemanganini, faith without works is death. Mm -hmm. Isn't that contradictory of your? Not at all. Not at all. Explain. I would, yes, I'm explaining <laughs> it in this way. Salvation or the assurance of the future life is not based on what I do as a Christian. It is based on what somebody else has done on my behalf. And this is the person of Christ. He came, he lived, he died, and he paid the price for me. And that is the same same thing that is recorded in Ephesians 2.8.9. If you have a chance, those who will be able to, 
to refer to the Holy Scriptures for Christians, the Bible. It says, for by grace you have been saved. So there's a concept of grace where it's undeserved favor. It is something that is given to you even though you don't deserve it. For by grace you have been saved. Through faith, this faith is being assured of things hoped for. And this faith is in Christ Jesus. So for by grace you have been saved through faith, not by works, lest anyone should boast. So it is not my works that save me, but it is the grace that I have put, my faith in Christ and that grace that Christ has extended. But he saves me unto good works. So uh, that is where now James, the, the verse you've talked about is in James. James, the, the apostle, and he was the brother of Jesus. He was telling people, show me you are faith and i will show you my action because faith without action is dead so in other words if i have put my faith in the person of christ whom indeed even the history of the world the constitutions the the the, the moral guidelines the things that we do are based on his teachings their teachings are supposed to lead to transformation because when jesus was around whatever he taught and what his disciples followed actually it is said they turned the world upside down Okay, so I am supposed to, because of the faith I have, my good works should be seen. But those good works should not give me the gratification and assurance that I'll go to heaven. Because if it is good works, then hey, what is the rule? What is, who will gauge? So like I say, I have done a thousand good works, and somebody else comes and says, I've done two thousand bad works. There's, there's a popular theory that when are like like people you've crossed to another religion oh, yes oh. that's another religion <laughs> but for me yeah, then my friend as in if somebody tells me like for instance we are having people who are trying to get our votes if somebody tells me I'm going to cater for all your debts and anything you need for the rest of your life until you die, why can't I give him my vote or her? Okay? So Christ has already paid and he has said, I've paid. It is finished. It's only for you to believe. And actually there is no sin I committed in the past that Christ has not forgiven. There is no sin I will commit today that he has not forgiven. Neither is there a sin in future that I will commit that Christ has not forgiven. He will not have to go back to the cross. But that raises another question. Okay, on, on, you, you, you see, when you started answering the first question, you mm -hmm. said something about purpose, where mm -hmm. you are yes. in life. Yes, uh, yes. So, uh, eat your Bible. Purpose, mm -hmm. and uh, especially the question of consent mm -hmm. on the Bible, mm -hmm. that I've had a mm -hmm. point of contention. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. There are a few people in the Bible in a I always wonder. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me just ask. There's a, there, is there a concept of choice in the Bible? Mm -hmm. uh, and in that, I'm, I'm asking, are you allowed to say no to God? Mm -hmm. No, no. Mm -hmm. Like um, Mary, Mary, mother of Jesus, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. someone just showed up and was like, you're going to be pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> but did she have a choice in the matter? Or was mm -hmm. she so scared? Because in that time, we, it was under grace, mm -hmm. under law. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and, and throughout, you, you've grown up in the Jewish culture, and you know, you've, you've read the story of Moses and mm -hmm. Jonah, and mm -hmm. people who say no to God and regret it. Mm -hmm. you know, most of them were punished, or something okay. happened in their lives. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a woman who just shows, want to get married, have a really good life, you know, to, <laughs> to And all of a sudden, like, pop. All of a sudden, someone just shows up a complete. Oh. Supernatural force oh, comes yeah, and cuts you know, off her life know. and... Mm -hmm. The question of concepts. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And also, Jonah. Mm -hmm. Now, these are two people. I understand Jonah was a servant of God, but Mary and Kwa to come. She wasn't a prophet. Mm -hmm. Like, you, you, the, the whole, I, I believe Christianity is about choice. Are you allowed to say no mm -hmm. to God? Mm -hmm. you know, are, you, are you really allowed to choose mm -hmm. among your choice in a Pujanga and okay. parts okay. and strings attached? Yes, your question is loaded and it has so many things. Mm -hmm. um, but I want to answer it very simple by giving an example. Remember I said that religion answers three questions, where we came from, 
And I've said that for my case, because of that master designer and creator is God. And so I am imagining not to make God look bad, but I'm his property. Okay? So I imagine if I have a car and I want to drive to Nakuru, the car cannot determine what time and which direction. I will sit on it, put the ignition, step on it, and move it. <laughs> and so the, the car is there to serve my purpose and my desire. So if God has a desire and a purpose for me, and this is where he wants to take me, then that is fine. And that's where we talk about predestination. But even if your life is here, in as much as God has given us the free will to do what we are supposed to do, there are some assignments that he determines for us. And to answer the question of whether we have a free will and a choice, yes and no. Okay. Yes, by the virtue that God does not force things on us. Like the example of Jonah, even though I would say he's still forced because Jonah refused at first. He refused and he did not go. But God caused <laughs> the storm and he was swallowed and something happened he, for, for his purpose to be fulfilled. Now, Jonah had to pay the price being the fish for those three days and blah, 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 and moved out. And so one of the things that I'm learning from the example that you've said of Jonah and Mary, Mary said, I am your humble servant. So that if this is your will, then I have no choice to, to say no. Okay? And it, it, is, it is the... How do I explain it? It is the... Is it the irony or the quagmire? That yes, you have your life, you can make your choices, but... This is what God desires of you. I would give another example. Paul, the apostle, he was Saul, very renowned rabbi. And you didn't know, you forget to mention that Judaism is also one of those big ones. Judaism. And he was a Jew following the Torah and the teachings of Judaism. When Christianity came up, it was a threat to the status quo. And the teachings of Jesus were directing people differently. They were talking about a new covenant. They were talking about somebody who can forgive sins. They were talking about other things about grace, yet they are coming from the point of law. And now when the churches were being established, Saul, Paul now, Saul as a rabbi, he was going to defend his faith. And so he moved around looking for these people and dealing with them, even with permission from the leadership and the authority. But on his way, the Damascus encounter. His life was interrupted. He became blind. He went to, to, to under somebody else. He was helped. When his sight came back, even his name was changed because he was baptized. And he flipped and he changed from persecuting the church to now propagating seriously. Look at it as a favor. I look at it as, so, so today I tweeted something and immediately after the tweet, I saw some very serious people interacting with my tweet. And one of them, I don't know whether it is true, is our CS for education, Professor Magoha. And I'm like, hey, I wish he can have my number and call me for, <laughs> for something. It would be an honor if a CS would call me and ask me for a way that I can contribute to the nation. Okay, but he doesn't have to. Or for instance, if the president gets to to call me and say, Simon, this is what I would like you to to do to help me. One, two, three. I choose to say no. Maybe I'll I'll lose the privilege of serving under what he has called me to. Or if I do it, it will add to my portfolio. It will build my my CV. It will open up doors for me. Okay. And so in the same way I would look at it, if God sees it fit that as a mere man, I can be able to be used as part of his purpose and what he wants to fulfill, well and good. I hope I will be able to commit to it. But I'm praying he doesn't give me a task too huge that I would run away like Jonah and follow the 
consequence. Remember, for action, there's a consequence. Yeah, if you're given a chance to do this, you refuse, there's a consequence. And you, for, for me, in this case, I may miss the blessing that comes with serving God's purpose in my generation. So, in short, mm. Christianity, you can have choice, but I'm not choice. So, it's both ways. How is going water? <laughs> it comes with the responsibility. <laughs> so, uh, women in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Women in the Bible. Yes. Out, yes. Uh, been portrayed as ghouls, mm -hmm. even when they are helping. Like uh, the woman who helped, uh, the, the Israelites. The Israelites uh, when they were crossing to yes, yes. the Jericho. Yeah, yes. like uh, at a, even if they are, they are uplifting a woman in the Bible, nothing at verses to really to tattoo. You know, it's extremely male dominated. You know, and uh, Christianity, you see, I am assuming, I think I'm right, in our include. Everyone. It's inclusive, yes. Uh, it's Paul when he addresses the church in Corinth. Mm -hmm. You know, like, so, what is our place mm -hmm. in the church, am I mm -hmm. in Christianity mm -hmm. generally? Mm -hmm. You know, where we always tuna tuna fitwa ngo konyuma kate na na Yesu ali. You know, Asante, like, you, Asante. You, you, it's, uh, okay. This statement in the crumb as my seminar. <laughs> Christianity is used to subjugate women more than it is used to uplift them. You know, so why? What is our place exactly? Christianity. Come on to continue to come on, you know. Thank you. Even though I would be careful for you not to assume because of this. Number one, in answering the where we came from, the creation story, we are told in Genesis 1 and 2, and especially 1, God created them in his image, male and female. Okay? So you are God's creation, I am God's creation. From that point, we are human beings. There is nothing like you are lesser, I am higher. Now, when you come to the example of another lady, look at Esther. Have you read the story of Esther? Mm. as queen and how things happened even though there are some aspects because she had to be put in like a cosmetology beauty yeah. whatever See. for 90 okay. days and she came out radiant and the king loved her and I think there was also more of character than just her beauty okay a whole chapter and a whole book is dedicated to her when we come to the example of Mary in the New Testament Mary, God chose her anyway. Maybe God had no choice because when conception and carrying a child, <laughs> it's only the woman who can carry a child. And so Mary was, has been chosen and Mary has served. But also in the ministry of Christ, we saw women. Now, it is true at some aspects, there are some those, sometimes they are called terror texts that depict women in a very demeaning way. Now, let me say this. No philosophy comes in a vacuum. There is a culture that informs or like is behind that particular philosophy or thinking of way of living. Christianity, Islam, Judaism, uh, Abrahamic faiths. Judaism being the first, then Christianity, then Islam. This cultural setup is more patriarchal in nature, even in the way they do things. That's why you will find, like in the synagogues, women don't mix with men. In the mosques, even women are not allowed to come in. Okay, they would be, have a special place where they'll be. At least during the earlier days when I was in Sunday school, in churches I would see women sitting on the left and yeah. men sitting on the right. So there was no chance to mix. But nowadays, 
Christianity is evolving and things are changing and you begin to see a lot of inclusivity. There were days that even women could not be ordained to be clergy. Today, we even have some of the mainstream churches, women are being ordained bishops. They are being made bishops, consecrated to be bishops. And, and that is something that begins to show that in as much as that was then, things are changing towards what needs to be done. And we are even deconstructing some of the narratives. You know, we had that inbuilt notion that, oh, women are lesser beings. Women are supposed to be subjects. Women should not speak. And I think at some point it is both in the Quran, it is both in, in what Paul was teaching and ten, saying that women should go back to their homes and listen to what their husbands will have to, to say. Okay. And, 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 and that does not show the clear picture of you being created in God's image. You are a human being, you are an individual. And that's why I began by saying we share humanity, we share life. I should not look down to you as a lesser being because you have a different sexual organ than mine. We are human beings, okay? And, and so we also need to come back and look at ourselves even in our societies. Leave alone Christianity, look at Africa. When we started even in most African communities, more patriarchal. But what is happening today? Things are changing. Girls are being taken to school. Um, they are being given opportunities to serve. They are being helped. And that is why even in the world today, when we see any leadership that comes that is not democratic and is trying to demean one of the genders, we are up in arms and we make noise. I'm sorry to say this, but the example we are seeing in Afghanistan with the Taliban is not a good example. Children were going to school, both boys and girls. Now they have come and they are saying, girls should not go to school. It, it, anyway, on matters of uh, uh, women and men in the society, the example is usually very simple. A one-winged bird cannot fly. So you cannot raise one gender at the expense of the other. The society cannot be balanced. And so in the same way, Christianity today, and even where I am part of, and I'm, the church I'm part of, we are really ensuring that that happens. Okay. And I thank God, I, I, and I thank God this. I am a father of daughters and of girls. I find myself even in meetings, I tell people, whether it is in education sector or in leadership, I tell people, mtoto ni mtoto. Don't come and tell me that my daughter cannot become the bishop of the diocese of Eldoret because she's a girl. I tell them no. You cannot tell me that my daughter cannot become the president of Kenya. That Kenya cannot have a female president. No, this is a girl, she's a Kenyan and she has the right. And so for me, the way I'm raising my children, I am not telling or looking back and saying, oh, I need to have a male, a male kid or a male child. Already I have two kids. If we decide as a family with my wife that those are enough, it is enough. But I know society will start saying, oh, you are not complete. You need to have a man. Because there are people who encourage me nowadays, they tell me by this, I'm more, you are a powerful man. It's like even the society is becoming more biased now. The boy child is in trouble. It's like uh, you have girls, you met a boy. Mm. Anyway, <laughs> so, so. Yeah, so for personally, for me, even in my engagement and in my ministry, I empower both. I don't like say, wewe huwezi because you are a lady. Because already I am a father in my home and I'm a father of girls. And even if I were not, even if I were not, the other day <laughs> we were traveling to Bondo. So we arrived at around some time late. It was about, I think it was in 2019. And then one of these charismatic preachers on the streets, they're doing a crusade and they're talking and, and then the man says, your wife, you are a, a lady has no right. You are the one to determine, even if she is working, her work is to cook for you and to take care of the children. And there were women of members of that church clapping. And I'm like, I went to one of them and asked them, so you are clapping and you are being demeaned by this preacher. Is that the right thing? And I said, I am disappointed that this preacher, not because I hate preachers, but I hate the fact that he's trying to promote 
a sense of demeaning my mother, my sister, and my daughters, and even my wife. Because when you're demeaning a woman, you are demeaning your own sister, your own mother, your own wife or spouse, for that matter. Is it possible for men, as I talk to talk of topic, Dogo, to uplift women without necessarily uh, thinking about the relationship they have with them? You know, because all ah. of us, oh, I have a mother, I would never do that. Oh, I have a sister, I would never do that. Oh, I have a daughter. And you wonder, like, is the, is it the, is the only reason you are is because mm -hmm. of the relationship you have among the benefits of the relationship you're getting? Not, that is not the only reason. Personally, I would hate if somebody would deny me my rightful chance to succeed and to grow in life based on who I am or rather where I come from. I believe in equal opportunity both for the girl and the boy. So, okay, back to pictures. For, for, for preachers, for, for preachers and clergy members and even members of the church who actually demeaning the women mm -hmm. uh, try to need the imbalance. Mm -hmm. So do you have a solution? Like how how do you, how how the even members of how do they react to that? Is there a way na na Mario and a report like is there a process? Yeah. <laughs> is there a process to get rid of them or to need them yeah. advice Um and that's why for me I consider myself more of a teacher than a preacher. And what I think when you see such leaders and such pastors, it is lack of teaching. Actually, scripture says, my people perish or lack of knowledge. Marisha, there were days I would preach. Oh, and I would preach and I would, I would talk badly at people and I would see them as darkness and lost and I am much better but the more I got exposed in ministry the more I understood how God is dealing with us and you know the central message of Christianity is love it is the central message of Christianity love God and love your neighbor as you love yourself now that motivation of love that one if, if you know what love means you won't begin to demean or look down on any other person. So the solution is these people need to be given a chance for training. And that's why I know this might not be comfortable with some of the leaders. I respect what the president of Rwanda did. The next decade in Africa will be totally a different story based on what he decided. It is painful, it is tough, but it is helpful. Kenya, we tried to start asking for leaders to even have a, just a diploma in theology, leave alone degree. People started making noise. Status quo was challenged. And that not only applies to theologians, it also applies to politicians. Because when they were told we need to have a degree, then, okay? And so training is important. And if you are a victim, uh, one of the things I'll say is this. Don't be in a community where your life is threatened or is demeaned. You can look for a com community where you feel you belong. And within the Christian circles, there are different there are communities that love is there and love is shown. But secondly, you can even decide to cause the change from within in a loving way. Um, and begin to even teach from the scripture and lead from the scripture on examples of how women have been instrumental in ministry. But you do it in a loving way. You do it in a loving way. Um, and it is a work in progress. And that's why society is not perfect and community is not perfect. We are always improving where we see their weaknesses and we walk towards where we are supposed to go. And I must say the church, so far the church as far as I'm concerned has done a tremendous work in terms of 
seeing the progress and the importance of women in ministry. Yes. Okay, uh, thank you so much. Uh, so wrapping it up, wrapping it up, uh, 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> in the 30 seconds, mm. we love to hear the words here, so good before. So good. <laughs> <laughs> so we love the mm -hmm, words. Mm -hmm. Tell us why you're a Christian, why, why Jesus, why like, Bona? I am a Christian because um, through Christianity, I've gotten to get answers to the most three important questions in life. I am settled in terms of where I have come from. I am settled in terms of how I'm supposed to live. And I'm settled that even after this life, I am assured of a better tomorrow. But I'm not looking for a better tomorrow and sacrificing today. I'm enjoying life, every bit of it, because this is what I'm assured of. But again, going forward, I have an assurance based on what placing my faith on what he has already done for me. Okay. And Nikki, asante sana for your time, yes. for trying to explain Christianity to us. Mm -hmm. uh, everyone at home, if you have questions, uh, comment section, equal on fire, fadali. If you have someone you want to ask those questions to, your pastors, your clergymen, fadali, tag them, and we will make sure to know meet. They don't have to know that we're not on their camera. We can't go to the police or those people personally. Just contact us. I uh, contact the Guapo, Mutawana, and uh, yes, to our sponsors, Madonna Graphics, our cameraman Bravin, Asantini Sana, and Marvel Comforts, Mkitaka Pillows, Mpige Simu. Tunawashukuru Sana, and Diki, thank you again for coming. Thanks. Uh, Misha Harun, your host for today, and this is Langa Swan TV. See ya! Ciao!